at this point invite, invite Dr. Burnett Blake to give us the message that God has prepared for today. All right, wonderful, wonderful. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I trust that you are hearing me and I'm loud and clear. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for um, continuing to lead out. You have been doing a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful job. For those of you who are praying, those of you who are uh, participating in different ways, um, it's just great to know that we can come together and be blessed. And so here we are um, uh, on this uh, beautiful um, Friday morning. It is for you, my Thursday night. Yes, I'm getting that right. Amen. And so I'm going to jump right into it. I'm just going to jump right into it. I trust that you have been learning some things and that you've been encouraged by the things that you are hearing, not just this week, but what you've heard before, and that you're continuing to grow in the grace and the knowledge of Christ Jesus. For after all, these moments and session is to empower us to be drawn closer to God, to be revived, to be transformed into his likeness. So pray with me, Father in heaven. Great indeed is your faithfulness. One more time as we uh, share your word, I pray that you will just allow your spirit to take full control, God, that you'll speak to our hearts today, revive and refresh us this morning. Let your will be accomplished in our lives. And I thank you for every person who is listening in, dear God. Let your blessings be experienced and your power be manifested in the lives of your people. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So um, last night I talked a little bit about the first aspect of prayer. We The night before I spoke about prayer, what is prayer and so on and so forth. Prayer is something that is learned to the disciples as Jesus teach us how to pray and Jesus taught them the Lord's prayer. But Jesus went on to let them know that prayer is not just a one-sided thing. Prayer um, involves both the human and the divine. Every prayer, every sincere prayer um, should receive an answer in some way or the other because God is a prayer answering God. We ought to shout hallelujah. We ought yeah. to be comfortable and be convinced and be at peace to know that when we come to God in prayer and we pour out our hearts in sincerity that our father in heaven he does hear and yes he will answer again not in the way we may pray and not at the time we may hope but the fact is there's an assurance hallelujah that God will answer Amen. So we talk a little bit about communion, communion, the first aspect of prayer. You know, it is important for us to know God, to delight in him, to be in friendship with him, to, you know, not only to seek God or the most important aspect of our prayer life is to seek God for who God is and not so much for what we want from God. Because when we have God, we've got everything. You know what I'm saying? Everything. So you live prayer with God, you live absolutely with everything. We jump into the second aspect. So and we talked a little bit about communion yesterday, and that has to do with our relationship with God, right? It's the foundational aspect of our prayer. If communion is missing, then our prayers can be dull, boring, uh, difficult, and we don't want to pray right? Uh, and so if that foundation is not there, then we have a crumbling um, building. <laughs> it's not going to stand. It's not going to last. You know, so if communion is missing, if that uh, um, friendship is, if that delight is not there, then it is literally difficult to maintain a delightful relationship with our God. And so you'll find that you have to force people to pray. You got to, you know, kind of prod them, pray. You ask for somebody to pray and it takes for ever to somebody to open up and pray because folks are shy they don't want to pray and so on and so forth and and the fact is we can't force people to pray we can't guilt people into praying but i'm going to jump into the second aspect so i want us to understand understand that prayer prayer is an invitation from God to spend time with him. That's really what it is. God invites us. Luke chapter 11, 9, so I say to you, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek, 
will find knock and it will be open, right? So it is God who invites us. Jeremiah 33, verse three, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. It is God who invites us to pray. He extends the invitation to us. And when we come to him, we come with the assurance that the one who has invited us will indeed hear us, amen? So the first part of our prayer life is that of communion. And so there is a second part to it, a second aspect of prayer. So we are looking at the triangle. So we have the foundation, right, as, 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 as communion. And then on the one side of that foundation, we have the second aspect, intercession, have mercy. You know, so when we understand what intercession is, we will understand that there is no greater work in the spiritual world than intercession. Folks, because my time is short, and, I, and, and I'm not saying this for just saying this sake, but I wish I could get in a little deeper with you and could spend some more time because this is so sweet. This is, I mean, this is awesome. When you really think of prayer, you know, and what prayer is, you know, oftentimes we say it's just talking to God as to a friend, but what really that mean? What does that really mean? You know what I'm saying? So we, we were understanding a little bit more about this aspect of prayer. The first aspect is communion. The second now is intercession. Intercession is the act of one who goes between, right? Someone standing in between um, mm -hmm. or the act of, of, of one praying on the behalf of another. Now we get in that. So intercession mm -hmm. is the act of one who goes in between. So it's a go between. It's standing in the gap, right? In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 12, the Bible tells us that Jesus makes intercession for the transgressors. Jesus mm -hmm. goes between us and the father as the intercessor for humanity. Romans 8, 26 says, we know not what we should pray for as we ought to, but the spirit makes yeah. intercession for us. Hallelujah. Now, mm -hmm. listen, listen, Moses, if you remember Moses, Exodus chapter 32, and I'll come back to that in a little bit, but at Exodus 32, verse 31, we see Moses also interceding on behalf of the Israelites after they sinned, when they made that golden calf and worshiped him, worshiped the calf rather, Moses made intercession to the Lord. And the Bible said, Moses returned to the Lord and said, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Um, yet now, if thou wilt um, forgive their sin, and if you will not blot me out, I pray thee out of your book. Can you imagine Moses standing between um, God and the people and seeking God's intervention on behalf of the people? So what? that's what we notice about the text. All the texts, whether it's Isaiah, whether whether it's Romans, whether it's Exodus, we notice Jesus is interceding. Jesus is standing in between. The spirit of God is standing in between. He's making intercession for us. And Moses is standing between Israel and God, um, making intercession, appealing to God on behalf of the people. So intercession, intercession, intercession. When we talk about the prayer of intercession, right? It has nothing to do with the person who is praying. Okay. Intercession has nothing to do with the one who is praying, hmm. but everything to do with the one who is being prayed for intercession. Okay. Right. So it is not, if I'm interceding, I'm not interceding on behalf of myself. I'm interceding on behalf of someone that's intercession. It goes between so I'm standing between the guilty and the righteous God mm -hmm. and appealing to the righteous God on behalf of the guilty intercession, right? Communion has everything to do with us. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, let's put it this way. Let me, let me back up. That's not true right there. Let, let's correct that. Communion has everything to do with God. Communion mm -hmm. is seeking God for who God is, trying to, to find him, to delight in him, to take pleasure in him. So communion is about God. Intercession is about others. I hope yeah. I'm making sense to us, mm -hmm. right? And then when I come to the other aspect, you'll find out that other aspect has to do with us, right? So for now, communion has to do with God, 
seeking God for who God is, intercession has to do with others. In other words, seeking um, um, God's help on the behalf of others. Mm. Ezekiel 22, which many of us are acquainted with the text in Ezekiel 22, where it actually describes the very disastrous state of God's people because of their sins. They sinned against God. They committed grievous sins. They were wicked and evil. God's people, imagine that, the church. <laughs> the corruption was so universal and God was angry with his people and he was ready, he was ready to punish them. And the punishment was that he was going to scatter them among the nations, was going to put them in captivity now listen to the lord listen to god himself ezekiel 30 22 rather verse 30 the lord said he looked down on his people he saw the wickedness he was ready to uh, 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 throw down his wrath against them and god says so i sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on the behalf of the land that i should not destroy them hmm. Man. He's looking for someone to stand between him and the wicked people. <laughs> mm. And then the Bible said, I found none. God said, I found none. Verse 31, therefore, I have poured out mine indignation upon them. I have consumed them with a the fire of my wrath, their own way. Hmm. Their own way have I recompensed uh, upon their heads, said the Lord God. So God looked for somebody to stand between him and the people, someone to intercede on behalf of the people so he would not destroy them. He found none. And so the Bible said, God said, I had to pour out my wrath. Mm. Now understand, whenever there are moral and spiritual crises, God has always Look for someone among humanity who would be willing to stand between him and the people, to seek him on the behalf of the people, to intercede for the people before he acts. It's a mighty God. This we have seen with Abraham. We have seen it with Moses. And yes, we have seen it with David. Are you with me? Uh -uh. With me today. We have seen it we, with Daniel, rather, Daniel interceding. Um, in Daniel chapter 9, there was a prayer of intercession. We see Abraham when he said, Listen, if there is five or ten or so on and so forth, we see that intercession going on. So intercession is about stepping between God and the guilty for God, a pleading with God to avert the judgment. Mm. Pleading with God to move the judgment away from the guilty party. The guilty party is destined to receive a just reward from God because they've offended God. And so the intercessor stands between God and the guilty and intercede on the behalf of the guilty. Intercession, therefore, calls a truce or a ceasefire between the offended one and the offensive one. Mm, yeah. The offended one is God and the offensive one is the sinner. We who I tend to fly in the face of God and do our wicked and evil things. So the prayer of the one who is interceding, therefore, or the prayer of the intercessor builds a wall around the guilty party who is being prayed for, and it provides protection from the judgment or the wrath of God. What does this chapter 22 says? I look for one who would stand in the gap and build a wall. Hmm. I would not destroy my people. That's what intercession do, does. Intercession builds a wall around the guilty party who is being prayed for and, and provides protection, Jesus, from the judgment or the wrath of God. But intercession also, also builds a wall around the, around the person who has been prayed for as a means of protection from the destruction of the devil who whose only desire is to steal, kill, and destroy. Let me say this. If somebody had not interceded for you, the devil would have taken you out a long time. You've got some children, parents, you are in the line. And you know, had it not been for your prayer of intercession, the devil would have taken out your child a long time ago. But blessed be the name of God. You interceded for your child. You interceded for somebody. And in mercy, your 
your prayer, build a wall around that person, around that child. And by God's grace, that child was saved from both the wrath of God and the destruction of the enemy. Amen. So, 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 so the devil always remember desires nothing more than the destruction of the sinner or mm -hmm. even the saints of God. Mm -hmm. He wants nothing more than to wipe out. He wants to kill everyone in their sin. He wants to take you out. And so the intercessor is a goal between. Mm -hmm. he, the intercessor stands or the one who stands between the wrath or the, the judgment and, 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 and pleads for mercy on behalf of the person, talking to God and pleading with God, uh, uh, trying to avert by the prayer the destruction that is about to be metered out. I'm hoping that you're understanding me. I'm cutting everything so that I can kind of wrap this up. But, but sometime in the future, I may be able to make this as a great presentation where I can cover everything so you can get what I'm trying to say. But just for now, I'm just doing a shortcut. Um, in his book, Douglas Small, uh, um, uh, Transforming Your Church into a House of Prayer, right? Noted that intercession is more than just prayer, but that intercession is a symbolic act that places a person between God and the one who is in, being interceded for. It is through the act of intercession that God and the person who is being interceded for is uh, brought together. So your prayer of intercession <laughs> builds a bridge between God and the guilty and bring both parties together. In other mm -hmm. words, in other words, I'm going to use a word that is going to cause somebody to think, hmm, I don't know about that. But in other words, intercession forces a meeting between God and the guilty party. Mm -hmm. Are you, are you understanding me? Amen. Understanding me? All right, all right. Amen, amen, amen. Intercession brings forth a meeting that would not otherwise have taken place had somebody not interceded, you know, and, 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 and forces that meeting between God and the guilty party or the person who has been prayed for. We tend to put God in this box, right? And, 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 and we kind of, we are programmed, you know, to think that only certain things God will do and certain things God won't do. And, and so when I use the word force a meeting, you know, you, you may feel a bit uncomfortable as though we are forcing God to do something that God doesn't want to do. But watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch hmm. this. In Exodus chapter, <laughs> in Exodus chapter 32, right, we mm. see some of this nature uh, 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 when God had determined to wipe out the children of Israel because of their rebellious act in worshiping the golden calf. We know the story, right? Exodus 32, if you don't know it, read the text. God said to Moses in verse 10 of Exodus 32, now therefore leave me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them. God is saying, leave me Moses, leave me, move away from me. Don't talk to me about these people. Leave me alone that I will pour out my wrath mm -hmm. upon the people and consume them. And then I'll make me another nation. Mm -hmm. Moses said to God in verse 11, um, mm -hmm. he pleaded with God and said, Lord, why does your wrath burn so hot against your people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? In other words, Moses stood between the guilty Israelites and the great God and pleaded with God to spare his people. He interceded by forcing a meeting between God and the guilty people. And if you were to read the text, verse 12 said, the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. And if you continue to read the text and move forward, you would notice that God says, tell them, get themselves together because I'm coming down to meet with them. He brought a meeting. Had not Moses interceded, mm -hmm. God was ready to wipe out Israel. It was the prayer of intercession that brought God to step back and said, all right, Moses, mm -hmm. 
I'm coming down to meet with them. Hey, the book of Psalm chapter uh, 106 verse 23 says, God would have destroyed them had Moses not chosen, as had Moses not stood in the breach before him to keep his wrath from destroying them. Had Moses not interceded, they would have been destroyed. I'm trying to tell somebody this evening or this morning that God is waiting us to stand in the gap the wickedness around us is so much and I, and, and it, I mean the evil is so thick around us and God is looking for intercessors people who would stand in the gap and intercede on behalf of God's people I realize that my time is is up and I don't want to take more time than I should there's so much more that I want to say on this. I may need to leave it for tomorrow, but listen to this. Listen, I'm going to skip over Abraham because we notice Abraham in Genesis 18, he interceded with God when God was ready to destroy Sodom. And God says, if I found 50, I'll do it. And, and Abraham began to go down, down, down until 10. You know what I'm saying? So intercession, intercession, therefore, is a spiritual act, right? Intercession is more than just a prayer. It's a battle. It's a battle. It's yeah. not kneeling down and talking to God. Intercession is a spiritual act by which we bring people into God's presence and then ask God to meet with them. Therefore, the intercessor creates a meeting between God and the person. That's what I meant when I said force is a meeting. It is the intercessor that brings God in a connection with the person, brings God in connection with the guilty party, with the sinner, or brings God to look down in mercy upon the saint that you have been interceding for to act on the behalf of somebody. That is why the communion aspect of prayer is so important because you cannot intercede for somebody when you have not been in communion with God. Yes. Bring somebody into God's presence when you have not been in his presence, when you have not been delighting in his presence. You can't intercede. Uh, Yo. As you want to, when the communion aspect, the foundational aspect of prayer is missing. Mm. So that is why communion is that first foundational aspect and then intercession. So you got to seek God for who God is. And then you come to God, seeking mm. God to act on the behalf of others. So listen, listen, I'm going to end. I'm going to end. Intercession is doing battle, right? I, I'm, I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm going to pick that up tomorrow. Let me pick that up tomorrow, God's willing. But listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. I'm, I'm going to end right here because I want us to pray. There is so much, so much that we need to intercede for. Understand me, understand me. The things we call intercessory prayer on a Sabbath has nothing to do with intercession. That's not intercession. Our Sabbath prayers that we call intercessory prayer are usually just asking God for things. Fix this, fix that, fix that. Intercession is standing in the gap, appealing to the almighty God to withhold his wrath hey. or to save somebody, to do something for somebody that he would not otherwise have done had you not interceded. So I pray that tonight, this morning, that as we go through our prayer, we'll understand a little bit more about the different aspects of prayer. Intercession mm -hmm. is a battle. We need to commune with God, to seek God for himself, for who he is, to delight in God. But as we seek him, we also need to understand that there is a perishing world and it takes our prayers it takes us to stand between a guilty world and a holy God to appeal to his mercy to save those who would be doomed had we not prayed. Father in heaven, Jesus. there's somebody in this moment mm. who needs to be saved. Somebody, God, mm. somebody needs to be rescued. I don't know who it is, but in the name of Jesus, this moment, I plead with your God of visit with somebody. I pray that you'll sabotage the plans of the enemy. I pray that you'll bring to naught the emotions that have been set in place to destroy that young man, that young woman today, God. In the name of Jesus, yeah. come up 
against the devil right now, God. Lift up your blood as a mighty standard in the name of Jesus. Rescue the perishing soul. Deliver that person, dear God, whatever it is, Jesus. Do something for somebody this morning so that your name would be exalted and someone would be rescued. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God 